Okay, so now I'm going to put the um, grass clippings that I got from mowing the lard yesterday. Those in. That'll give us some good nitrogen rich organic matter down in the bottom. Might even heat the soil up a little bit with some compost heat, which wouldn't be a bad thing for this early in the season. Hey, next I'm going to put the straw mix from the rabbit pen. Got some rabbit poop in there. going to be interesting because I've never done it quite like this before. But I'm worried about this draining some of the nitrogen out of the soil. So I got some Nature's Care Organic Blood Meal to put some nitrogen in. It says for every 20 square feet of area apply one cup of Nature's Care Organic Blood Meal. So that would be one cup for this area. I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle some more in here. Alrighty. Now I'm going to put my other bag of Daddy Pete's on. And now I'm going to go get my perlite and mix that in. And then I'm going to put some compost and maybe some soil from my garden in there. So it's going to be sort of like a Mel's mix, square foot gardening type of mix. All right, let me go get the perlite. I'm trying to mix that together without getting too much of the straw mixed in with it. Probably doesn't matter a whole lot. I'll get a little in there. Okay, ready to put some tomatoes in. I'm planting these. I'm gonna plant them right in the middle. Okay, I was going to put two rows in, but the bed just seems too small. It's only three and a half feet wide. So I'm gonna put a row of tomatoes down the middle, and I'm thinking of putting some peppers in front of them. And then I'm gonna put some cucumbers on the back side here. So hopefully they'll do well. This is my cherry tomato. This is a cherry tomato that I've been growing for like three or four years and it's done the best of any of the other tomatoes. It's been really good tasting too. So I got them in these big pots. I'm gonna just dig down. Because of everything I put in the soil I'm not really gonna put too many amendments in it.
Actually, I'm down into the clay, so I'm going to get rid of that. deeper. Okay, hey, get the pot about even with the soil line. But I'm gonna put a little extra soil on here, so I'm gonna rip off some of the bottom leaves. So they're not dragging on the ground. Oh, look at that, there's roots out around the edges, that's good. I didn't think they were gonna be in this spot long enough to put out that many roots, but obviously they're growing really well this, this spring. These are the best tomatoes I've ever grown. All right, I'm gonna go put some, get my water can and water that in. Okay, take 40. I'm gonna put it on jet, go around the edges. I'm gonna put this on jet and go around the edges to force the soil down around the edges. Okay, and I'll let that sink in a little bit and then I'll put the earth that's not as wet around the top to bring it up a little bit. All right, next, this is a Isis candy cherry. Haven't tried that before, but I'm looking forward to it. got some nice roots around the outside there too and it's got a bunch of earthworms on the bottom So, before I move the camera, I'll come back here spread some of this topsoil back up around here. I also made a little bit more soil. I made some more with a bag of composted cow manure from Daddy Feets, which I'm really impressed with it. And I put some perlite in with it. That's just manure with perlite in it. Jesse got stuck in the house.
Okay, I'm gonna move the camera in a little closer on this third one. This is an ox heart. This is an ox heart. It's a um, heirloom tomato that I got the seeds from my brother. If you want to get the tomatoes right where you put them, you can just sort of go around in a circle before you move the pot. I was never one to get a measuring stick out though. And last but not least for tonight is going to be even closer. This is a black Versage. I believe that's a um, heirloom tomato also. All right, before I forget what I plan to wear, I got some of these huge popsicle sticks that I'm gonna put the, uh, the name of what I planted. So this is Black Versage. Black Versage. Hopefully we'll be able to read that. Go ahead and write those on the other ones. So there we go. Got four tomatoes planted down the middle. I'm gonna put some peppers out. I might wait a little longer till the soil gets a little warmer because I've, I've still been putting my pepper plants in when the nights are getting get a little chilly here still. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of that manure and perlite mix. Doesn't that look good? That's pretty impressive how good that looks. I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of that over the bed. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna plant some clover in this too for a cover crop. Cover crop. I've done a lot of experiments on this bed. Be interesting to see what happens. All right, see you later. Okay, so I got the outside cage up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some an inside cage going across here. And I was thinking I was gonna put posts up in the corners, but this seems so sturdy. By the time I get the middle shelves in, 
I think it's going to be sturdy enough without it. There's, there's my tomatoes. That's my cherry, family cherry tomato. That's an Isis candy cherry tomato. Ox heart heirloom from my brother. And a black Versage, which is, I believe, an heirloom also. Then I got pepper. I think that's uh, Anaheim Chili. Poblano from Ray at Praxis. Some purslane, Swiss chard. A bean plant that must have been in my compost. Not sure that pepper, probably an Anaheim Chili. Another pepper down there. Let's see, I planted some sunflowers around this top side, north side. Also planted, oh, uh, let me think about this, nasturtiums, that's what that is. I'm going to plant cucumbers along this side, which is more shaded. I might plant some lettuce through here too. My brother sent me some lettuce seeds. Then on this side, I planted some calendula flowers. See, I got one there, one there. There's another bean that's growing. And my fence turned out a little bit wider than my plot, so I'm going to dig the grass out from under there and put some wood chips in to try to keep the grass from growing in so quick. Alright, there we go. I'll get the camera rolling later. Oh, I did say I was going to show you the butterfly garden. Planted a butterfly garden. I got some of Luke's from MI Gardener's seed pack of a uh, perennial wildflower mix. I also th threw some other kinds of seeds in here. These big things are buckwheat, which will grow quick and they'll make a nice flower. Planted some of Luke and my gardener's little sunflowers in the middle too. But we got lots of things sprouting up through there. I put some chicken wire under here. So that if my dogs get in and try to dig, hopefully they'll be frustrated real quick. And I buried it under there so we can't see it real easily too. Okay, good morning. It is April, I'm sorry, it is May the 7th, sort of a chilly morning. Thought I'd take another video about how things are growing in the tomato cage here's the tomatoes they're up that must be at least three feet now and I put two horizontals in I'm ready to put another one up here got to do that pretty quick before they grow anymore peppers are sort of hanging out after this poblano, poblano, raised poblano is growing pretty well. And it has a volunteer Malabar spinach there too. Which will be some breakfast. There's a volunteer Mexican spinach too. Or not Mexican spinach, Mexican sunflower. You can see the clovers coming up there. As well as lots of volunteer stuff for my compost. Lots of Malabar spinach. That was some grass. Don't know what that volunteer is. Probably gonna have to pull all that out. Purslane is growing. There's a Swiss chard, which I'm probably gonna have to keep that pruned back or eaten back pretty well so it doesn't shade everything. Sunflowers are growing here on the top side. Need to thin those down. So 
so I'll have one every six inches or so. I don't think these are huge ones. I think they're from seeds I got from Luke and my gardener. This is the uh, nasturtium. And then I put some cucumbers along this side. There's cucumber there. And I'm planning to put another cattle panel. Continue this panel here. A little bit eight foot farther to put some pole beans on down there. So hopefully I'm gonna get that done today. Let's see. I was gonna show you a little bit more on the construction here. I put some zip ties on to hold it together while I put it together and then I put some wire around the top corners and then I'm wiring the cattle panel horizontal supports as I go and I bent the the ends over see how it comes down and I bent it over and wired it in a couple spots. Looks like I only did two on this side. And looks like I did three on the other side. But it's a sturdy cage, it's not going anywhere. Let's see, I showed my butterfly garden last clip too. Here that is now. Lots of stuff coming up there. Probably could have, I probably put enough seeds in, I could have planted my whole backyard. So we'll see what survives. I've been eating a lot of the buckwheat out of it. Nice breakfast. All right. See you next clip. Okay, here's the tomato cage complete. It is July the 8th. As you can see, my tomato plants, that one actually is done. It died. I think that's a black Versage. My heirloom ox heart gave us a couple tomatoes. And I believe it is still alive at the top. So, yeah, it's still blooming. So hopefully we'll get some more ox hearts out of that. I think these tomato plants either got too dry or the blight killed them. But you can see the understory did really well with the clover. This is actually volunteer red Malabar spinach, purslane, Swiss chard, there's a pepper plant, which I have gotten some peppers off of that already. There's another pepper plant. That's a cute little pepper. There's another cute little pepper off of that one. I'm glad I took a video so I'll be able to go back and see for sure which plants these are. I believe this is an Isis candy cherry tomato, which it's still alive too. It has some cherry tomatoes still coming. And the last one down here is my family cherry tomato. It's got some on there. Looks like a bird was eating that one. So if I had to build this thing over again, I would use the pieces as they came for the cross pieces especially. Just lay them in there and put wire around the edge. It would be a little wider than this one is 
but it would be a lot easier to put together. This was an expensive project, but the good thing is it'll be here for a long time. Probably outlast me. Anyways, there's some sunflowers. I think I got those from MI Gardener. There's a bee in that one. Hello, bee. Let's see, I believe these are nasturtium. I've got cucumbers growing up on the back side here, which I just picked a bunch of off of here this morning. Uh, there's a big one down there that I didn't pick. I let that wait for tomorrow. Where is it? There it is. If I don't pick it tomorrow, though, it'll be huge. All right, so there is the tomato cage. Tomatoes didn't do too bad for being a brand new bed. For me, anyways, that's what I'm thinking. All right, thanks for watching and have a blessed day. What? How are your shoes? The bottom's ripped off. Oh, we should go get your shoes tonight. I mean, they're okay. They feel okay. Yeah, but I. Babe. But it makes me wonder how old they are. If they dry rotted or something. I bet. <laughs> Sorry. I stepped in my van and I thought I stepped on something. I was like, <laughs> looked at it. And it was ripped off the whole way up to there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. I was going to put a row on that side and a row on this side, but the bed just seemed too small. It's only like three and a half what? feet. I'm doing a video. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Okay, take three. <laughs> okay. Okay, I got my hands stuck in the umbrella. I need help quick. Oh my gosh. Okay, take 40. Okay, let me see if I can flip the camera around. I thought I could do this while I had the camera running, but maybe I can't. Alrighty, I'll just do another clip the other way then. <laughs>